Good morning. It is Saturday the 28th of September 2019 and I thought I would uh, put in a little update uh, regarding some of the previous charts. Although I'd like to introduce a new topic uh, which is the topic of timing in astrology. Timing is notoriously difficult to get and we usually think uh, that events, events that happen on particular days are the things that we should be timed. However, events seem to emerge out of a, a, a continuing developmental program underneath the surface. There are machinations always beforehand and thoughts and circumstances and then events appear. Now, I happen to think that uh, when a transit is within about one or two degrees, particularly of an outer planet, then events start to or seem to surface. They, they, they come out all part of a process. So if something is developing like a, you know, or somebody's heating something underneath and then eventually there's a volatility to the water and it changes its state. You can see this very clearly in horary astrology in which a question has been percolating for a little while. Sometimes it just jumps out, but it's been percolating and a, a certain timing happens within the person. They're moved to get in touch with an astrologer or they've exhausted all the other possibilities of finding a solution to the question and then, and then it emerges. And it's surprising how the horary chart of that moment that kite, what I've called the Kairos moment, an open, a moment where something turns in the mind and a question arises out of the, um, out of the unknown, uh, the caverns of, of the unknown somewhere, perhaps linking to some other intelligence inside us or outside of us. Who knows? We can speculate about that. But timings are interesting. And um, what I'd like to do today is look at the old Boris announcement chart um, because previously we've done a video on it and it proved that it was valid by its signification. And signification is what is significant. And we look at a chart and see, does something spring out at us or does something really tell us? Yes, yes, this chart can be used as an oracle. This chart can be used as a radix. It's a radical point. It starts from that point and so therefore can be relied upon to produce more information if only we have the wit or the understanding to see into, into the situation. It was quite a few months ago um, that I did the chart of Julian Assange. I th in fact, I did, I think, four videos on it. And in one or more of them, I indicated that the Pluto was transiting Pluto now in um, Capricorn, went back for a bit, would be opposing um, Julian Assange's Mercury in Cancer in the ninth house um, next February. Well, classic uh, astrology, really, and uh, classic of transits, even though his... Uh, even though his incarceration in Balmarsh prison uh, was supposed to come to an end due to jumping bail, I think it was only about six months, something like that, um, they have decided to keep him in jail uh, as, as so to prepare, if you like, for uh, the uh, extradition hearing, which will happen, we've understood now, as in February 2020. So that will occur uh, exactly as Pluto opposes Julian Assange's Mercury, and I believe that this was said about four or five months ago. Now, the reason I'm pointing it out is just to give some kind of clear indication here about timings and about astrology. And the reasons I've been doing charts, if you like, previously and saying things about them is to see whether indeed we can rely upon this process, even though it's a rather ancient oracle. It is surprisingly valid in the modern times, as my practice in honorary astrology is testament to. Questions seem to come in waves and sometimes you cannot answer them, but all of these videos are an attempt to garner interest in the old art of astrology and be uh, applied, whether it's psychologically, in to do with questions or indeed in mundane astrology. A lot of people that have been following this channel will also see that I've done quite a lot of event charts. They, they, they differ slightly from um, Orrery, but it's like event charts are questions on people's mind. 
I do event charts as good practice, you know, when the Titanic sets sail, the charts of interviews or buying a flat or buying some purchase or the start of a race or a poker tournament, whatever. It's always very interesting to keep the astrological mind active by doing charts of moments. I've tried to help here to uh, say that what we do is we look for the signification first to go through the methods of astrology when it hits, when the mind is engaged in the chart, it says, aha, yes, that seems to be the case. Um, uh, then we can, that seems to prove the chart, magic, make it radical. And then we can do, do further investigation into it. So what I've done here is I'm going to uh, bring up the chart of uh, the announcement. Um, again, Boris wins the leadership election. This, I've called it Boris's announcement because this was the time when he began making his speech, when it was announced, sorry, that Boris Johnson had won the leadership election back in um, July of, uh, 23rd, in fact. Uh, I pointed out at that time that um, the whole speech uh, from the person that announced it through Boris's Johnson's speech seemed to show uh, as this uh, pro uh, progression of the MC in real time takes about four minutes a degree, it came to this point, the 24th degree over three degrees, that's about 12 minutes in all. That's how long it took for the actual speech to start and then finish. Not Boris's speech, but the point of the announcement. I found that actual time, the real timing of the MC point, uh, rather notable. And I thought, yes, I should come back to this chart and look for the other timings at another time. Well, this is what I have done today. And in horary astrology, um, in general, uh, one of the best methods of timing is to look at the moon's future aspects. The moon is said to co-rule anything, but usually represents the action in the matter, particularly if it is near a, an angle. And you'll notice these are all on angles and angles tend to, things, tend to bring things into manifestation rather than just potentials or states of consciousness or uh, moods one goes through or reflective periods of time. These things appear, they, they come out over the horizon lines or dip below the horizons and they make, a, they make a showing or an appearance. All of these are on the angles and it tends for quick and positive results when things come there. They seem to be the planets are in alignment with uh, the cardinal points of the compass and therefore are considered to be um, strong. They're considered to show strongly and want to come out into the open and make themselves known through one thing or another. This approaches, the moon approaches this angle uh, and you can see it's about three and a bit degrees away from it, 323. Well, I'm going to take you through the, the timings now. I mentioned that um, this sun in Leo suggested almost a new hero on the scene in the house of the in the house of honor and success. This is the prime minister uh, coming through, although I think the, the primary ruler, the ruler of the ascendant Venus conjunction, the MC here was a, a large scale announcement of an important position. Uh, in Boris Johnson's um, nature chart, he has sun exactly conjunction Venus, actually at 28 Gemini, which you can see in this chart, the part of fortune conjoins. We've done a previous analysis of this chart, so I won't go through all of the uh, details done before. But this also is an announcement of something new, something bright. I see the blonde hair uh, there coming through and Johnson is a bit of a fighter. So uh, again, I've analyzed this before, but the timing of the moon is it goes to a nice trine of Mars and then it goes to a nice trine of Jupiter. And this suggested the honeymoon period. Boris Johnson changed the announcement, he changed direction, he got rid of a lot of people from his cabinet and filled, filled up other posts with people that actually wanted to leave the European Union. And so there was a, a real change around, I think, of the narrative. Um, there was a positivity. Uh, Parliament had not was not meeting. It was uh, had its break. So we went round the country. I said there will be a lot of travel, a lot of largesse, uh, a lot of hope being put forward. Um, all of this fire sign stuff. But I did mention 
in the last video that then it hits a lot of trouble. The moon goes on to square Saturn, square the nodal axis, square Venus, uh, Pluto, square to uh, Venus, and then square to Mercury. And so I said, there looks like there's going to be a lot of trouble ahead, which we all know anyway, that's not a big uh, statement of any kind. But when I've looked into now, or further, made a further analysis of this uh, horoscope in terms of actual timing, these are the actual timings um, of the moon. And here are the actual dates that refer to them. Timings in Orrery are uh, uh, two factors you have two factors first of all you can take the tran future transits as they actually are onto an honorary chart to see if anything happens so this is actual timing william liddy used to do this see things progress onto during the actual time and then make certain announcements or certain forecasts the other way is symbolic timing that we take the amount of degrees between each planet and have to decide whether that degree is a month, a day, an hour, or a year. In other words, the, the degree symbolism doesn't tell you what the degree points to. This is all a matter of common sense. There are rules. For example, if a planet is in a cardinal sign like this, and it is in a cardinal house, this is usually meant to indicate days. If it's a cardinal sign is in a succedent house, then it usually indicates weeks. Again, if it is in a, uh, a cadence sign, it usually represents months or years. But these rules are not arbitrary, they're in general things, but we have to apply the timings to what we see in the actual situation hours months and hours days months or years sometimes i've known the progressed moon uh, in in this uh, symbolic timing to re one degree to represent a single hour forward so we have to be circumspect in applying specific rules but when i looked at this i decided to take it as years uh, sorry as um as weeks because I felt that during this period of time, uh, up to the 31st of uh, October, there are a number of months and weeks ahead. So, it's very interesting that this Mercury moves on to uh, uh, Venus here, and we see it is in three months from the date of the question. That takes us up to round about the last week of October. Uh, we don't know because uh, Mercury here is going so slowly, so we could say it adds on a little bit more, uh, perhaps another week or so, which will actually take us up to the 31st of October. I first of all found that degree symbolism rather telling. Although uh, anything retrograde, the timing tends to go off a bit and it becomes a bit murky towards the end. We don't really know. Uh, this because it's slowing down as it were it's not in its normal motion mercury is a very unreliable planet on on here in terms of timing but nevertheless we should continue to use its degree symbolism and see how things work out and so if we take the moon first of all onto saturn uh, this was three degrees 23 minutes and if we work that out in terms of weeks it, it, uh, from the date of the question. What it worked out to was the 15th and 16th of August. Now, it didn't, it only came out in the court case in Scotland that this was the very day that uh, um, uh, Boris Johnson decided to put a tick next to the idea of proroguing, par proroguing Parliament. I believe the, it was put forward by some cabinet minister or something, and it was agreed by Boris Johnson. And this fact came out at the, uh, uh, the court in Scotland as part of a, uh, a challenge to his decision in that particular court. So that was very interesting that we hit the square, the moon hits the square, an event appears. It is to do with, I suppose, a, a block or a stopping, or um, we could stretch that symbolism somewhat. Um, uh, but the planet itself is uh, sometimes has something to say, but it is the timing that I'm looking at. Then we see this moves on to a square of the nodal axis. 
The nodal axis here was very important in the uh, chart of the Brexit orrery, which I may come to again. But when it hit this, it hit it in virtually exactly five degrees, in fact, four degrees 52, which takes us to, interestingly enough, the 27th and the 28th of August. And for those following this ongoing uh, drama of, the, of, of Brexit, this ongoing show, um, this spectacle, this very leonine spectacle that we're seeing. 28th of August was the actual day that Parliament was prorogued. And so this is a very fated point here. We can see the nodal axis conjoining Venus uh, up here. So it, it has its effect. And if you remember that Boris Johnson's natal chart has Libra on the ascendant and so this is reflected here. I believe this is him although this is a secondary significator. That's an interesting thing that these actual dates are pinpointed almost to the uh, exactness give it a day. Now then it hits and of course this moon was square and was conjoining the um uh, the seventh house as well, giving this e extra emphasis on the first square. Then what happens? So it's parode on the 28th. Now, this is a fascinating one. Um, it's exactly nine degrees away from Pluto. 12, because that's 1240. This is 2140. Uh, that's eight, nine degrees, which would be equivalent exactly to nine weeks. Nine weeks from the 23rd of July. And that takes us on, interestingly enough, uh, uh, 23rd of July to the 24th of September. If you count the weeks forward, that's where it comes out, Tuesday, the 24th of September. There is no margin for error in this one. And what we got on that is the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court in London, its announcement that the prorog prorogation, which was the previous square, was now void. It didn't exist. It never happened. It was illegal. And so Parliament has been recalled. And note, this is Moon Square Pluto. We will not normally take uh, out a planet scenario, but we're doing this in terms of events. So again, there was a stopping. It was an ending. Uh, I think that was a very, very difficult time for the government, uh, a difficult time for the strategy or these plutonic strategies that are going on underneath on both sides. There's a lot of scheming and a lot of plotting and a lot of things going underneath the surface that we don't know. But the moon comes to a square of Pluto and bang, we see something take place. Um, so again, uh, uh, down here, accidentally, I've put September. This should actually equal uh, October. So my apologies about that, but I'm, I'm not going to go and do this uh, video again. We just have to take this Venus. The square to Venus comes in uh, 12 degrees, and that actually comes in about the 15th, 16th of October, which lo and behold is the Queen's speech, Venus Mercury or the uh, a, 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 a prominent woman makes a speech. And so that's interesting too, because also what happens is that Boris Johnson goes uh, over to Brussels, 13, 15, 16, 17, over to Brussels to try and make a deal. The moon will be in the seventh house of deals and agreements, and uh, we shall see what comes of that. I think this will be a crunch point for Boris Johnson, and being a square, nothing is ever easy. Squares produce strong results, not necessarily um, negative results, but they produce results which cause a, a clash or cause a, 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 a friction between one thing and another. None of these uh, perfections, as they are called, none of these future aspects are easy. Now, the interesting final aspect is between the moon and Mercury. Uh, this happens in 14, 14, 30, 14 degrees 30. This takes us to the last week of October, and it could be that this timing is, is, is changed somewhat because, as I said before, a retrograde significator is not usual in its timing. We may or may not use that, but I, I don't think that's exactly reliable. And so this feeling is that whether we will be coming out or not, again, is a, on a bit of a cliffhanger. This is not reliable and in fact rules the 12th house. 
Now, I think this Mercury is very important in Boris Johnson's chart. Uh, uh, sorry, bon Boris Johnson, because he is a Gemini. He has been said to be duplicitous. He says one thing, uh, people are arguing about his words. Um, Donald Trump is a Gemini, the same thing. He twitters out. Uh, but mind you, Jeremy Corbyn also is a Gemini at this time. And he spent 35 years campaigning in one way or another against the European Union. And now he finds himself in this strange predicament where he's not saying he's for or against. I think that's a great political move. They've refused to make a decision, but nevertheless, it it, uh, it uh, suggests that uh, all of this is a machination in, way, in many ways to get into government. For example, the uh, the um, uh, Jeremy Con uh, Corbyn's government idea of renationalizing certain industries, which um, are uh, possible, especially in relation to the railways. It seems fares go up everywhere, but the uh, things get worse. I'm not going to talk about the whys and wherefores of uh, political choice, but if the Labour Party stay with the European Union, none of these nationalizations will take place because they won't be allowed to. So I don't quite understand the opposition's position in relation to this, but nevertheless, they're all one Gemini against another at the moment. And uh, we get this double speak, two speak, things, people swapping sides. We never really know where, the, where, where something is going to happen. So there's an element of uncertainty. But ruling the 12th, this is usually hidden enemies. So I often link it to spies, and I often link it to a secret machination somehow below the surface. Things are here, you know, uh, words like treachery and betrayal are coming out, all connected to um, 12th house, hidden things underneath the surface. This is called the house of hidden enemies. And those hidden enemies in a psychological sense are our own psychological problems that we've unacknowledged. Um, but also certain people here uh, behind the scenes which are plotting against us. But of course, Boris Johnson also has his supply of, uh, of things going on beneath the surface. And this is not what we're privy to. We just see the outer skirmishes. But coming back to this chart is quite interesting, isn't it? That this moon actually squares Mercury on the 31st of October. I looked at, um, I've been looking at the 31st of October chart too at 11 o'clock. Uh, it doesn't reveal much, but the moon, interestingly enough, is in exactly at 11 o'clock. It exactly conjoins Uranus in the ninth house of the 1066 chart. Whether this is an indication that there is a break, a divorce from a foreign power, uh, or a foreign, uh, uh, the progression of the uh, European Union into uh, uh, further integration. Whether that is the case, I don't know. I may do that chart another time. Um, all I know at the moment is that uh, there's a lot of difficulty around both in Europe, I believe uh, Germany is going into recession. There's a lot more people against the uh, further integration proposals in the parliament. Whether the parliament in Strasbourg has, has any power, we don't know, but the voice of opposition has become stronger. Let's hope, and, let's hope that Julian Assange's voice, which I have called the incarcerated voice, um, let's see uh, if, if that can come open too. I, I'm unsure about that, but that's an unfolding case. One final thing, though, I did want to um, put here, um, if I can find it, um, is just a little thing, uh, as far as Johnson, ah, the Supreme Court decision. I just thought I'd put this in at the end because it makes a, a very interesting thing about signification. This was the Supreme Court announcement. I watched it on television and so timed the very first word and it, it was here. What we get here is uh, obviously on top here is the judges and 10th House always represents those people in control or the, the judges or the, the, the importance, the president, the government of a country and represents obviously um, your own status in life. 
Oh, we see Leo there, and if there's any one word connected to Leo, it's kingliness or the royal crown. It has a symbol of the lion, and as you know, the Supreme Court has the royal crest on it with the, with the lions and the unicorn either side. Very interesting here that this represents royalty, the crown, and supremacy. That was a word that I'm going to put down in my correspondences list for the sun, and Leo is supreme. The supreme ruler is the exalted ruler, the main one, the, the big cheese, as it were. You don't get around the Supreme Court. And you'll notice that its ruler here is in the sign of justice and rulership and uh, decision making. I thought I would show this because it's very fascinating how the symbolism really turns into an actual showing. It's beyond symbolism, really these placements indicate the actual thing. It's as if there's some kind of what I call a, an astrological counterpart or an astral counterpart. Oh, we call it astrology because it's a significator or a radical significator. This is the supreme and this is the court. It is in the house of uh, uh, the uh, in mundane astrology, the judiciary and parliament. And so this was really parliament against the executive. So here we see the Supreme Court's decision uh, because Libra is the sign of justice and weighing up. Remember the, the, the justices there above the scales of justice are above the old Bailey. And here, uh, no, no doubt there, I'm not sure whether on the European Court, but here we have a wonderful sextile of the moon from uh, the House of Law. And you see here in the Supreme, uh, in, the, in the sign of supremacy, and it is sextile to sun. I think it was always a foregone conclusion. Uh, this seems to suggest that this was a correct and right decision to make, at least from a legal position. Now there's been a lot of arguments about the Supreme Court decision about whether it was a political decision. There were no detailed uh, pre precedents in the judgment. It was very short. It was very uh, coherent. Everybody knew what the judges had come to, the decision, but there was no long, drawn-out legal argument about why they came to it. There is, this has caused a great deal of controversy. And if you remember back in the Brexit horror chart, I suggested that when Saturn turned direct, there would be a showing in the outer collective. Just as where well Jupiter turned direct, there will be an outer showing, and indeed there was. I would refer you to that video to look at what it was. But I didn't know then, when I did the orrery, um, that, that the outer showing in this, in this was the, the uh, court case on, I believe, the 17th or the 18th of September. That was the day that uh, Saturn went direct, and uh, that was the day that was announced that there was going to be an opposition case to the uh, case for prorogation of Parliament. I believed at that time that that turning of Saturn uh, from uh, retrogradation to directness would be actually a strength for the government. As it turns out, it's, it's a kind of complete, uh, uh, it was a difficulty. There was a, a lot of embarrassment about that. But on the following days, uh, Boris Johnson has come back to the Houses of Parliament and it's uncertain where things are going. Uh, this may have even strengthened his argument and strengthened his case. Uh, because it once more announces that there is something going on, a tassel for power between these brokers of power, Ted Downing Street, the Supreme Court, and Parliament. So we don't know yet, but I thought I would show you this um, chart. I'm just going to stop sharing now. So for those of you interested in timing, there are symbolic timings. And there are actual time seasons shown by the transits. One, we're using NATO, we usually use transits and progressions. Anyway, look, I hope that that's uh, interesting. And all of those provings of those timings have now been shown to be accurate. And so I would expect both the Venus one on the 15th, 16th of October and the square to Mercury to come out. Although we must always be a bit careful of the sly dodger, uh, sly dini of uh, juggler of uh, Mercury, especially when retrograde. Uh, sometimes, even though he might drop the balls and appear to miss up the uh, mess up the performance, something is usually going on in the back of the mind. 
any retrograde planet is uh, uh, what Noel Till, great astrologer in the United States, who I refer to so many times, I learned so much off of him, always used to refer to retrograde planets as having a counterpoint. We have what's going on underneath the surface, but what is going on underneath and may be of a different order. So it's rather like that 12th house rulership of Mercury that we saw in the last chart. Something behind the scenes is going on that we're not hearing. And when Mercury is retrograde, it's as if you're, you're watching the show over here, but something underneath here and withdrawn from view. Yeah, the machinations behind the closed curtains are going on rather like the, uh, the Wizard of Oz, you know, who's, uh, who pressing all those buttons and, and, and moving all those sticks behind the behind the scenes to make something appear larger and more frightening than it is. In this case, actually, I think it's the other way around. What we see are some surface tensions and arguments going on, but what's underneath is a real tectonic plate kind of shift going on in the constitution of the United Kingdom. And uh, there are battles going on, perhaps even very powerful battles beneath the surface waves of what we see. Okay, well, I hope that's been of interest and I hope to do a few more. Now my energy has come back a bit after doing so many. Anyway, uh, cheerio for now and we'll see what happens.